At a small convenience store, a cashier diligently scanned the items while helping the customers check out. His name was Gang Soul, and he was 25 years old. He did not have much going on in his life. His only qualities were being an orphan, working part-time at convenience stores and being quiet. Although his daily routine was mundane, there was something unique about his life that was different from other people. That was the fact that he had the very same dream every night nonstop for 17 years. Later that evening he returned to his accommodations and lay on his bed with a blank expression. He was relieved that he had managed to finish the day's work. Some people would be scared if they heard about his dreams. However, Sol, who lived a shabby life in a small room without a decent job, found his dream to be a unique asylum. The first time he had the dream was back when he was in elementary school. He had first arrived in a place covered in dense clouds, and the surroundings were filled with shooting stars and distant galaxies. In his dreams, he had fallen into an unknown place with magnificent buildings. The boy felt as though he had been possessed by something as he stood before the entrance of the building. The front gates opened gradually, and he was greeted by an unknown woman wearing a fox mask. Little Soul followed the fox-masked woman into a large hall where everyone else was wearing a mask. They were playing a game, and their table was filled with excitement as the participants eagerly took turns. However, their game was interrupted when the fox-masked woman announced Soul's arrival as a newcomer. At the time, he remembered being in adult form despite being a child in real life. He wore clothes that he had never seen before, similar to the masked individuals. Moreover, he too was wearing a mask. He was nervous as he entered the banquet hall. His mind was filled with questions, such as why he was wearing such clothes and why his voice and body had become those of an adult. The man in the lightning mask welcomed him and offered the seat next to him. Gang Soul knew that he was definitely in a dream, but he felt like the conversations were real. Once he had settled down, the fox-masked woman asked for the name he would like to be addressed by, despite everything feeling unreal to him. Soul shared his nickname, thus he was known to them as Snowman from then on. After acknowledging his name, the woman asked him to create a piece that would be used within the game. Soul was surprised by the unexpected request, which made him realize he had been invited to join the game. At that moment, a screen appeared before him. It was a character creation menu containing different classes and attributes. With it, different combinations could be used to create characters with unique traits. The boy immediately understood the assignment and decided to give it a shot while the strange dream still lasted. The first character he created was of the mage class, and its miniature figure appeared before him like a hologram on the game board. The game's setup appeared to be inspired by a 3D tabletop RPG. Soul's choice earned him a compliment from the lightning mask man, who thought the boy was bold for a first-timer at the game. Afterward, the man held a glowing dice in his hand and announced that the game would begin. That was the first of many days Gang Soul would spend playing. The mysterious masked characters, excluding the boy, seemed to enjoy themselves, having already gotten used to the game. However, it wasn't long before the play session ended. At some point in the game, the man in the clown mask asked Snowman to roll the dice quickly because their party was about to be annihilated. Having experienced the game a little, the boy knew that rolling the dice was necessary to choose what to do next. When he did so, a couple of options appeared. The choice was obvious to Snowman, and he selected the third option to trap the monster using frost magic. As soon as he selected the option, his mage character unleashed a wave of ice magic that stopped the monster dead in its tracks. Snowman was instantly praised for his excellent choice. The boy was inwardly impressed by the use of magic in the game. The man in the plague doctor mask was next to roll the dice. He did so while confidently asking everyone to leave the rest to him. Right then, his warrior cleaved the monster in two with one swing of his sword. When the dust settled, resounding cheers were heard. A notification about the end of the quest quickly followed. Afterward, the fox-masked woman announced that the quest for the day had ended before asking whether the players had enjoyed the world of eternity. This name made a deep impression on Gang Soul. He was amazed by the game, and wondered how the fate of the pieces changed depending on luck, strategy, and choice. One thing was clear though, he had definitely never played such a game before. Due to the many available options, Snowman thought about the potentially unlimited combinations of the pieces. The Plague Doctor stood up and expressed how fun the trial match had been. He then asked whether Snowman would like to party with them on the next day as well. The boy realized that he did not need to think too hard about the answer because he was dreaming. So, it did not matter where he was or who the people around him were. Soul cheerfully agreed to the request because he was having fun. From that day on together with the unknown beings, Snowman enjoyed the world of eternity every night. One day at his nursery, he revealed to the other kids that he had been having the same dream every night, where he played games with strange people, but no one believed him.
Instead, they thought he was insane and ostracized him. Sol was depressed at the time, but he quickly realized that it was only natural that he became a loner who was branded a liar, since he had been talking about unbelievable things. At the time, he was already a reserved person and had a tough time adjusting to school life. Even so, the dreams continued. Sol's thoughts returned to the present, where he lay down, exhausted from the day's work. He slowly shut his eyes and wondered whether everyone had already gathered for game night. As usual, the same dream appeared to him. Snowman appeared in the mysterious realm once again and was cheerfully welcomed by his gaming comrades, who expressed joy at seeing him and even addressed him respectfully. The masked characters gathered around him with excitement. It was the last day of the game. The mysterious realm was the only place Snowman enjoyed staying over the years. Despite the connections he had made, it wasn't like he had never been curious about the real identities of the masked individuals. At one point, he even wondered whether they were actual deities. However, despite his curiosity, Snowman feared he would stop having the dreams if he found out the secret behind them. That was why he could not bring himself to ask. All that mattered to him was that he was having fun. Such were his thoughts as he smiled at his masked friends chattering. Although he had met them all in his dreams, the mysterious realm and the people in it meant everything to Snowman. Playing World of Eternity with them every night was the most important thing to him. The chatter was interrupted when the lightning mask reminded everyone that Snowman had one last solo quest with his character, the Great Sage. Right then, everyone focused on the reason they had all gathered. Despite all their efforts in creating great characters, none of them had ever completed that final quest known as Ascension. Because of this, they were all eager to watch Snowman take on the challenge. Just as the name suggested, the goal of the final quest was to transcend one's limits and rise to a higher realm. This was the endgame for Snowman, who had been playing the game for 17 years. During that time, he created a number of legendary characters with whom he created miracles. Because of that, the other players considered Snowman their idol. However, just like everything else, the game, which had been played in its trial version, was about to end. Afterward, the official release would begin. The notice made Snowman wonder whether his dreams would also end. Looking around, he realized that everyone but him seemed to understand what an official release meant. However, at the moment, they only seemed interested in the last quest. Snowman thought it was a shame the game would end just when he had started to enjoy it. He had become so engrossed in it that he had memorized the entire rulebook. If he had a little more time, he would have created one more character. His ultimate piece would contain all of the growth and strategies that he had developed through 17 years of hard work. The fox-masked lady encouraged Snowman that the end of the trial version only meant things would get better after the official service launched the following day. This was because their dream would finally come true. The lightning mask chimed in and said that it was about time they got back their divinity. He also expressed a strong lust for revenge on the worms responsible for their current state. While Snowman listened, specific words stuck out to him. Divinity and worms. Over time, he noticed that his masked friends often talked about strange things that he never understood. However, he decided to worry about that later and only focused on what he needed to do. Throughout the last 17 years, only 9 out of his 30 pieces had been able to attempt the ascension. This was Snowman's last shot at it, and everything depended on the dice roll. Unfortunately, when Snowman rolled the dice, the worst possible result was seen. Because of that, the great sage Milan lost control of his mana and was greatly weakened. He then lost his footing before ultimately falling to his doom. Snowman's heart sank at that moment. His friends took turns consoling him. His failure was the result of his tenth attempt. Despite everything, he was unwilling to give up just yet. He had the option to continue or give up on Milan's quest. Snowman realized that it was too difficult for a man to rise to the heavens, and looking at the state of his peace, the choice was clear. He decided to end Milan's journey. When the other players were notified that the quest for Snowman's peace had ended, they appreciated his efforts which had brought him so far. After all, their idol had accomplished something that neither of them could. While Snowman left the empty game hall, he found it hard to accept that the game he had enjoyed for 17 years had ended the way it did. Some time had passed, and a brilliant ray of light shot into the sky. Gang Soul looked around in confusion when he found himself in the mysterious realm once more. Something about him was different about his latest visit. He was no longer disguised as his alias, Snowman. Beyond anything, the young man was surprised to return after the game ended. Suddenly, a loud voice echoed, announcing his arrival. Afterward, the large double door of the nearby castle swung open, and a crowd walked out. Among them, a few familiar figures took the lead. Unlike their usual selves, Snowman's friends appeared hostile toward him. They accused him of being a worm who had fooled them by masquerading as a deity. 
The lightning mask, who was ahead of the group, was the first to yell out for everyone to get him. From a casual point of the deity's finger, a golden metallic collar appeared around Gang Soul's neck with a sharp clicking sound. The collar immediately activated, and the wild energy rampaged throughout his body, sending him into a world of agony. The electric shock collar clamped tightly around his neck and forced Gang Soul to fight for every breath. The intense pain had also caused his eyes to tear up. Gathered around him were the voices of angry deities. They hated Soul for being a human who dared to deceive them and wanted to eliminate him. Suddenly, the young man felt something tighten around his neck and lift him from the ground. The one responsible for this was the lightning mask, who had extended his hand toward Soul and channeled strong currents of electricity into the golden collar. The deity sounded menacing when he announced to everyone that Gang Soul would soon meet his end. Gang Soul despaired inwardly, wondering whether he would face a pathetic death. Suddenly, a voice interrupted the imminent execution, asking the other deities whether he had agreed to their decision. The masked deities turned toward the voice to see a silver-haired man with a faint halo around his head. The lightning mask referred to the latter as Corden, and asked what the man was doing. Corden approached the group as one of the deities accused Gang Soul of deception. Unexpectedly, Corden dismissed it all as an overreaction, and asked his counterparts to calm down with a cold glint in his eyes. Right then, the human's attention turned to Corden. Soul recalled that the character before him had shown up a lot in the game's play sessions. For a moment, Soul hoped that Corden had come to his aid because the deity was one of the most influential figures among his peers. Corden discouraged his colleagues from trying to shed human blood in their realm, and offered them a better alternative. He suggested that they send Gang Soul back to where he belonged. The others were unhappy to hear that, and thought that it would be the same as letting the human escape. They wanted Corden to make it make sense. In response, he argued that none of them would bear any guilt if they let Soul go. After all, it seemed like they had all forgotten about what that day was. A quiet discussion began, until Fox Mask stepped up and reminded everyone that the day of the harvest had arrived. Corden agreed while a malicious aura began surrounding him. He explained that it was better to send Soul back to Earth because the official service of the World of Eternity was about to be launched. Therefore, Gang Soul would become a sacrifice for madness. Soul's pupils shrank in horror. He could not believe his ears and began wondering what Corden meant. Finally, the shock collar was suddenly released, dropping him to his knees. Meanwhile, the masked deities seemed happy with Corden's suggestion, and agreed that it would be disgusting to stain their realm with the human's blood. Afterward, the jester mask asked if the human had somehow climbed to the upper realm without any knowledge of where he was. In response, the lightning mask sneered at Sol before saying that the young man would be eliminated like the worm he was. Having heard the latest threat, Sol realized that Corden had no intention of helping him, and instead wanted him to suffer. His hopeless thoughts were interrupted when a voice suddenly spoke in his mind. The voice asked whether the young man was familiar with the name Snowman. Soul was puzzled and quickly scanned his surroundings to find the source. The owner of the voice knew what the young man was thinking and assured him that it was a private conversation, and Soul was the only one who could hear it. The young man soon realized that Corden was the one speaking to him discreetly. The deity seemed to have split his attention and spoke to both his peers and the human at the same time. Corden revealed that he knew about Soul's alias. Unfortunately, he did not have much time to explain everything, so he went straight to the point. Soul learned that the Earth would be transformed when a different world merged with it. Both Earth and the world of eternity would become one. The young man was shocked, to say the least, and he asked why the merge had happened. In response, Corden explained that the deities had chosen the path of madness instead of faith. Their goal was to restore their power by converting the suffering of humans into the power of madness. Soul failed to understand, so Corden addressed him as Snowman before revealing that the only way to save humanity was for the young man to complete the final quest, Ascension. He also explained that it would be of great help if Soul also managed to gather as much madness as possible. Finally, Corden left the human with a word of caution. It was a warning that the deities had the right to take action if Soul revealed the affairs of their realm to anyone. A sense of dread washed over the young man as he considered how he would complete the final quest that he had repeatedly failed. Corden wished him good luck while walking toward him. The deity hoped their paths would cross again someday. Afterward, he stretched a hand and a portal to earth opened beneath Soul's feet, revealing a bird's eye view of a city. With his best menacing voice, Corden banished Soul with a flick of his hand and sent the human plummeting toward the earth in terror. Although they saw Soul seemingly fall to his death, some of the deities seemed disappointed. However, Corden distracted them by asking them to join him in witnessing the harvest of madness. Soul groaned while on his knees and tried to catch his breath. 
He had somehow landed safely and was grateful to be alive. His suspicions were finally confirmed. The people he once considered his friends were real deities and did not just exist in his dreams. When Sol scanned his surroundings he saw only a dark void that stretched as far as the eye could see, he realized that he was inside the world of eternity when a message popped up, informing him that the merging of the worlds had been completed. A bright flash suddenly surrounded Sol, and when he opened his eyes he saw a familiar fantasy landscape, his eyes widened in shock when he realized that everything before him was real. Another message screen appeared with information about the world's population. The numbers were an indication that everyone on Earth had been isekied to the world of eternity. While Sol was still distracted, his surroundings darkened once more. The new area was different because unlike before, he could see the bright silhouettes of people in all directions. The new area appeared to be the character creation zone. When Sol realized that Corden's words were true, he almost had a panic attack. The game had become a reality, and everyone on Earth was in the same situation. He also remembered how the lightning mask had called him a worm. Sol did not feel insulted because at that moment he truly felt like he had become one. What was even more unsettling to the young man was the fact that he had once viewed the world of eternity from a deity's perspective. Sol wondered whether it was really out of line for someone like himself. His fist trembled as waves of anger washed over him. The deities had once accepted and cheered for him when they played together. However, they all turned against him the moment they learned that he was human. Their words after the fact made it seem as though it was only natural for them to eliminate him. Throughout his life, Sol had faced indifference and distrust from those around him. His earliest memories of his days at the orphanage were no different. Those to whom he decided to open his heart, whether human or deity, eventually rejected him. Sol was convinced that if things were as such, just because he was a human, then he had the right to be angry. At that moment he made up his mind, he would do what he was good at for the past 17 years and even go beyond his previous limits. As his body began transforming, his heart was filled with the determination to grow stronger and ascend to the status of a deity. When Snowman played his final game of World of Eternity, he discovered that a character's attributes were the most important thing, similar to Earth, where the classes of people were separated by the wealth they were born into. Because the game world had merged with Earth, Snowman could no longer recreate a character. If he were eliminated, that would be the end. Therefore, he needed to create a character that had the potential to challenge the Ascension quest without getting affected by many unexpected scenarios. However, some classes were favored, and others were not. Whenever Snowman played using other classes, he received too much influence from his companions. However, this time he was all alone, and there was one class whose abilities had yet to be confirmed. This was the class that Snowman intended to use, moreover he intended to go all in on his wisdom, cooking and perception stats. The summoner was a class that neither fit into the damage dealer, the healer, or the support roles, and the shadow attribute was typically known for not being that powerful throughout the game. However, Snowman understood that if he merged the two overlooked traits, then a certain reaction would occur. A surging dark energy covered Snowman's body, and his appearance changed to that of a mage. He was equipped with a starter outfit and a simple staff. When he opened his eyes, the suspicion he had was confirmed. The first quest was chosen randomly, and his destination was the ruins of the Forgotten Moon where his goal was to clear the first trial. Snowman was also warned that the penalty for failing the quest would be death. It took him a moment to remember this location. The ruins of the Forgotten Moon were meant to familiarize new players with the game, but Snowman knew that it was all just a farce. From his memories the difficulty of the ruins was extremely horrible. The ruins required a player to advance while receiving constant damage because it was filled with countless traps. Snowman knew that he would be at a serious disadvantage, because he neither had a thief-type class, nor did he possess a talent for disarming traps. In addition his class, the Shadow Summoner, was a caster, so his agility was low. He had also put most of his points into his Wisdom stat, however he was not discouraged. Rather, a strong determination appeared in his eyes. Snowman admitted to himself that if he had known about his first quest, he would have chosen a different class. Later, while walking toward the ruin, the summoner recognized the familiar scenery. The sight made him scoff at the irony of becoming a piece on the board, no different from the kind he used with the other deities. The sudden self-awareness made him far more nervous than he thought he was. It wasn't long before he arrived at the ruin's entrance. At that moment, a list of choices appeared before Snowman. They gave him options for the method to open the gates. The summoner was familiar with the game's choice mechanics, so he wondered whether they were available to everyone in the new world or just exclusive to him. When looking through the list once more, 
he noticed that only one of the options had an additional hint. His confidence came from the fact that he had also memorized all of the game's choices as well as their useless descriptions in the rulebook. Snowman had assumed that the choices would be different from the trial version, but he was relieved that this was not the case. From this he was sure that he could complete the ruins quest. Choosing to use the levers, the summoner remembered the correct order for pulling them. The first was the left lever, and then the right. Finally, the gate opened to reveal a hallway with a high ceiling. At the end of it was a bridge made of tiles with different engravings. Snowman's memory was triggered when he looked at the new set of choices. He remembered that he had to step on the tiles in a specific order to cross the bridge safely. If one stepped on the wrong tile, the traps would be instantly triggered. Snowman knew that this was no longer a game, and one wrong move would end him. He remembered that a hint was available at the start of that trial. Looking up he saw a tablet engraved with a strange language. The summoner was unable to read it because he did not possess the archaeology or divination talent. Despite this, he smiled because he remembered the important details of the text. The riddle of the tablet read, The lion does not share as it is ferocious, and the sheep prefers to go last as it is docile. The benevolent moon embraces all of them, and the envious wolf follows after the lion. It didn't seem very clear, however it was simple wordplay. According to Snowman's memories, the correct sequence was lion, wolf, moon, and sheep. The pattern would then repeat. When Snowman took the first step nothing happened. The second step gave him the confidence to dash across the bridge until he finally made it to the other end. Looking back, the summoner smiled because of how easy the trial had been. With the clearance confirmed, he was presented with a reward. However, he still had the option to forego the prize and proceed with the quest. Snowman realized that his reward would be small if he stopped. Therefore his mind was made up. As he looked ahead into the dark hallway, he remembered that the lesson of the ruin was that one ought to know one's place, and that one would have a futile end if one were to go after higher rewards. This was not a problem for Snowman because the quest was one that he had completely memorized. As he stepped into the second trial, the torches lit up along the walls. The trial before him contained the true essence of the quest. A player had to clear it without any tricks. What surprised him was that he could not remember the hallway being that long. For the first time he felt that his experience and memory were useless because the traps would activate randomly every time he played. The quest's hidden choices were also unavailable to him because he did not possess talents such as mechanical engineering or trap removal. Those talents would have enabled him to dodge the traps at least. Snowman stared at his reflection on the wall, and the scar around his neck reminded him of how the deities treated him. In his anger he swore that they had not seen the last of him. The young man took his first step hoping that the order he recalled was the correct one. When nothing happened, he took a few more until he inevitably made a mistake. As a result a trap was triggered, and a projectile struck his left arm and shattered his staff. Snowman's body trembled from the shock and intense pain. Despite what happened an obsessive smile spread across his face. He found the situation interesting. Snowman stepped onto the next set of tiles and triggered yet another trap. The pain from his injured leg made him groan. His face also twisted into an angry scowl as he inwardly cursed at the evil deities. He was frustrated that they had, for some reason, made the red tile the answer four times in a row. The young man felt as though he would pass out from the pain every time he was hit. Taking a moment to rest, he examined the continuous pattern of the red, black, and blue tiles. Since the red tiles had been the only correct ones so far, he thought the blue ones were the best bet going forward. Snowman triggered another trap. Fortunately, it turned out to be a little different. Instead of a projectile shooting at him, the walls and ceiling closed in slightly. This made Snowman realize that even the smallest of mistakes would eventually get him crushed to death. He suddenly broke into a run. However, he only stepped on the red tiles. He finally stepped through the exit. Snowman was then presented with the option to select his reward. The silver box that once appeared before him was transformed into a golden one. The young man knew the quest would automatically end if he received the reward. However, he was not content. While clenching his fists tightly he ignored the reward and chose to go into the next trial. His unusual choice made the viewers wonder whether he was some kind of masochist. Eventually, Snowman stopped in front of a door with a cryptic message. Once opened it would lead to the Plaza of the Moon. The glowing words on the door cautioned against arrogance. They advised one to know one's place and to be humble. All of this was familiar to the summoner, who chose to open the door. While standing at the entrance, something suddenly caught his eye. A knight maintained an odd posture, with a knee to the ground while supporting himself by the handle of a sword. When the knight had detected Snowman's presence, his eyes flew open and shone with a bright blue glow. 
He then stood and spoke with an ethereal voice, accusing the summoner of arrogance before asking how the latter dared to set foot at the plaza. Finally, he got into a fighting stance and pointed his blade at the intruder. Snowman's opponent was the Moonlight Knight, Kaluna. While the knight prepared to attack, a surging torrent of power covered his body, and his sword glowed brightly. When Snowman played the game with the masked deities, a number of them expressed frustration because they were unable to defeat Kaluna. Moreover, most of their frustration came from the insane difficulty of the quest, which was supposed to be newbie-friendly. During his initial attempts at the quest, Snowman and the masked deities were at a loss, not knowing what to do. The knight was the final boss of the Ruin of the Forgotten Moon. Fortunately, the plaza had safety zones that could be used to hide from Kaluna's attacks. When the knight charged, Snowman dodged just in time, recalling that there was no reliable way to reach the safety zone. He knew that a single attack was all it would take to end him. In the game, he had witnessed many pieces getting burned to death by the knight's power. Right then, a list of choices appeared before Snowman with the option to step on either the Black Sheep, Black Wolf, Black Moon, Black Lion, or Red Sheep Tile. The summoner realized that the tiles were the only means he had to fight back, just as before the order and color of the tiles were the key to victory. The order would remain the same as the one in the first trial. Once again the Moonlight Knight charged towards Snowman. However, this time he would fight back. The summoner quickly stepped onto the Red Lion tile which suddenly froze the knight in his tracks. This triggered the summoner's memory about the function of each colored tile. The red tiles reduced the knight's power and lowered his movement speed and defense. Next Snowman stepped on the Red Wolf, and followed up with the Red Moon tile. His steps were completed just in the nick of time as the knight closed the distance once more. Fortunately, he had significantly slowed down, which gave Snowman barely enough time to avoid the slash. At the last moment, his cape was slightly grazed. During the previous exchange of moves, he realized that the red tile's effects could only be stacked up to three times. Afterward, Snowman jumped onto the next set of tiles. When he landed on a black sheep tile, a fireball blasted Kaluna from behind. The black tiles activated devices that could deal damage to the knight. However, using them would also charge up the latter's moonlight power much faster. The solution was to use the red tiles again before dealing more damage to the knight. Snowman used the formula and stepped on the red tiles to weaken the knight's defense before stepping on the black tiles. However, just like in the summoner's memories, this boss monster was not the type to go down so easily. Kaluna grabbed onto his injured side and fought through the pain. However, he snorted before taking a stance once again. He accused Snowman of being an invader who was full of petty tricks. Unexpectedly, the latter had a strange grin as he looked at his opponent's stance. Kaluna was preparing to perform an insta-kill attack known as the Moonlight Slash. Despite the danger, Snowman did not flinch. The knight swung his sword and sent a blast of air pressure and moonlight energy toward his opponent. His power also scattered dust and debris into the surroundings. The dust eventually cleared to reveal a small energy shield with a silhouette behind it. Snowman had survived the massive attack. Beyond that, he even smiled confidently. At the last moment, he successfully defended Kaluna's attack by stepping on a blue tile. While the viewers were still in awe, Snowman leaped onto a red tile to slow the Moonlight Knight who had once again charged in for an attack. This time the knight's speed was greatly reduced. In the past, the Lightning Mask had asked why Snowman had gone so far considering that they had discovered the strategy of avoiding the opponent rather than defeating him. That was because the black tiles not only damaged the opponent negligibly, but also helped the opponent charge up his insta-kill attack. It was logical for the Lightning Mask to conclude that there would be no point in going the extra mile if their pieces ended up dead. At the time, Snowman had a reason for his actions. Back in the present, another fireball blasted the knight when Snowman stepped on the black sheep tile. Snowman's reply to the Lightning Mask back then was that he had figured out the right way to beat Kaluna. Once the dust settled from the blast, a few metallic pieces lay on the floor. They had broken off from the knight's armor. Kaluna was in bad shape, his body trembled while blood trickled from his head. However, he defiantly yelled at Snowman. In response, the summoner stepped on another red tile and debuffed the knight once again. He activated more tiles in quick succession and angered the knight who considered him weak. Snowman maintained his focus and attacked with a black tile, shattering the opponent's pauldron. As he gazed at Kaluna's injured shoulder, he knew that the battle would be over soon. The Moonlight Knight still had something left in the tank, and while taking another stance, he asked why the summoner had taken things that far. At that moment, Snowman was notified that Kaluna was receiving continuous damage from the Moonlight, However, his agility would increase by 10% every 5 seconds until he was defeated. Finally, the knight was ready. 
Snowman recognized the technique he intended to use. It was the New Moon Stance, a technique that made him incredibly fast. However, Snowman knew he could simply slow his opponent with the red and defend with the blue tile. The knight cursed at the intruder before using his final attack. Once again, the Moonlight Slash was unleashed. Snowman quickly evaded it and used the tiles to stack the damage and debuffs on his opponent. Facing the knight with the colored tile gimmick made the young man laugh unexpectedly. He had to admit that the final stage of the quest had a fitting name, the Dance of the Moon Knight. Indeed, as Snowman and Kaluna fought, their movements appeared almost dance-like. Finally, the summoner skidded to a halt and stepped on a black tile. While the knight charged, he was interrupted by another fireball which flung him back and blasted his helmet away. Finally, Kaluna dropped to his knees with a firm grip on his sword. While Snowman remained focused on his opponent, he watched as the knight struggled to breathe and bled from his severe injuries. The once sturdy armor had accumulated enough damage to render it unusable. With the last of his strength, the Moonlight Knight apologized to his master for failing the mission. While doing so, yet another attack found its mark. Snowman had stepped on another black tile and blasted a hole through the knight's torso. The summoner sighed deeply when he saw the notification that he had completed the final stage of the quest, he also saw his rewards, along with a new nickname. In another flashback, Snowman explained to the Lightning Mask that despite the risks, his approach to the final boss was the best. The summoner towered over his slain opponent. While holding out his hand he smiled as a strange dark energy emerged. With a command the energy quickly engulfed the knight. Right then a message appeared indicating the activation of the shadow summoning skill. As the shadows vanished, Snowman was notified that his skill had worked. However, despite the success, there were some drawbacks. The shadow summoning skill had failed to clone Kaluna's insta-kill attack, the Moonlight Slash, because the summoner's skill was too low-leveled. Additional messages appeared, indicating that the knight's strength would only be 20% of his original power. Kaluna rose as a shadow summon, his body had been completely repaired, and a faint purple glow shone in his eyes, meanwhile the viewers were in a frenzy over what they had just witnessed. Kaluna had reformed from the shadows with basic armor and fully reset stats. Snowman stepped forward and was pleased with his first summon after examining him. Although the knight's stats had decreased he had become a hero class summon. Despite the downgrade to his summon that last part made Snowman feel extremely lucky. Finally it was time to check out the rewards, he had received the highest reward, the moon chest. Once opened, Snowman leveled up twice and received new equipment and skill points, as well as potions and gold coins. As Snowman looked at his new stats, he decided on how he would allocate his stat points. The most important stat to a summoner was wisdom. Besides that, he looked at his loot, among which was the Moonlight Sword, which Kaluna dropped after his defeat. After checking out the sword's stats, the summoner equipped it to the knight because he thought it would only be fitting for a weapon to return to its original owner. Unlike other classes which required the summoner to direct the growth of their summons, the strongest trait of the shadow summons was their ability to grow independently and also equip items. Because of that each of them needed a separate investment of resources, however it would be worth it in the long run. Afterward, Snowman looked at his new staff. The item's name was the Full Moon Staff, which granted him 10 additional points in the Wisdom stat. The other loot item he obtained was unexpected. It was known as the Seed of Moon a consumable that the summoner was familiar with, and knew how to increase its performance. Finally, he checked out his new title, One Who Dropped the Moon. The young man was finally ready to leave when a golden light beamed down on both him and his new knight. While getting transported from the ruins, Snowman read the message indicating the beginning of the second quest. Five Good Brothers. The quest's location was deep in the mountains of Pandaya, where a tribe of hideous trolls lived. The monsters were known as the Rock Canine Tribe, one of the tribe's unique qualities was the way it selected its leaders. The current head of the tribe was known as Jamad the Tyrant. The goal of the second quest was to weaken the Rock Canine tribe using any means necessary and kill at least one of the tribe's leaders. There was also a familiar warning as Snowman arrived close to the mountains. The penalty for failing the quest was death, and the remaining time was 20 hours. While Snowman stood beneath the bright sky, he realized it was already noon. According to his plan, he would arrive at the safe zone by the following morning. Except for special circumstances, he knew that players would have a rest period after every two quests. Considering the goal of the quest, Snowman had a good idea of its difficulty. Although the mountains were not that tall, the same could not be said about the terrain. Guards were stationed along the Troll Mountain Path, so his only option was to spare time for a climb. Given its difficulty alone, the second quest required a five-man party, Snowman wondered why no one else was present with him at the foot of the mountain. 
The previous time limit required him to move fast. However, the new one seemed absurd at first glance. He was distracted when he saw messages about the death of party members. The sight made him curse inwardly, even the viewers thought that it was a hopeless situation. At the guard post in the mountain range border, the summoner spotted a green flag that was used by the tribe only when they wished for blessings from Tancred, the earth dragon, during the harvest festival. Right then, Snowman realized that he was in the area of the lowest class among the rock canine tribe. However, he was met with a gruesome sight of a battle with bodies impaled through their torsos. Looking closely at the attires on the bodies, he noticed that their party consisted of one priest, two vanguards, and one archer. This was a decent combination of classes, according to Snowman. However, it wasn't enough. If only they had the proper knowledge, they would have been able to clear the quest, and if they had survived, there would have been many more chances for them to attack. Snowman found the situation hopeless as he gripped his staff tightly. He was alone and had no choice but to come up with a different strategy. There weren't many plans that could work in such a situation. However, he suddenly had an idea. But then, a list of choices appeared before Snowman to attack the houses of the tribe in order, starting from the bottom, to wait until nightfall, or to search the area and gather information. When Snowman looked at the timer again, he was motivated to clear the quest alone and get the best rewards. The world of eternity had different outcomes according to the methods used by the player during a quest. This game mechanic also affected the behavior of the NPCs, giving them the ability to adapt to the situation. If Snowman's idea were to succeed, history would be made within the game. As he walked through the thick forest, the summoner considered the first option, to attack the houses of the tribe. However, he reconsidered given how dangerous it could get, even if he summoned Kaluna. The second option, a night raid, would be advantageous but inefficient for Snowman. He finally settled for the third option, to search and gather information. Looking up at the distant mountain peaks, he recalled an important part of the quest that would help him gather the information he needed. The exiles of the Troll tribe were a great lead, so he decided to look for them. Out of the five mountain peaks of the Troll settlement, the highest belonged to the Rock Canine tribe, while other tribes occupied the others. Snowman recalled that there were minor characters from each peak who all had unique stories from which the quest was created. The hidden key to the quest was the exiles located somewhere at the lowest peak. Snowman appeared from behind the tree and heard the ringing of tiny bells attached to a string. He was surprised when he looked down at them because considering their size, they rang louder than expected. On closer inspection, the bells seemed to use magic to work as an alarm. This was proof that the exiles were close by. Suddenly, a deep voice emerged from the bushes, and Snowman was almost scared. The voice regarded him as a human before inquiring about his identity. In response, the summoner stepped forward and tugged on the string of bells. Right then, the voice warned him not to come closer. This reaction was natural toward an intruder, but Snowman assured the voice that he was not dangerous. A diseased hand emerged from the bushes along with a large figure with protruding tusks. At that moment, Snowman noticed a rugged hut behind the bushes and wondered whether it was the exile's hiding place. The troll repeated his warning. However, when the summoner explained that he had no bad intentions, he was accused of lying and being an agent of the Rock Canine tribe. At that moment, more choices appeared before Snowman on how to respond. He could either threaten the troll, make an excuse using a level 1 persuasion skill, or order the exile to help him exterminate the Rock Canine tribe. The other useful option was to talk about the exile's problem, which required level 1 insight. Having decided what to do, Snowman asked why the exile did not want him to be close. However, all he got was the same response in the form of a warning. After a moment of silence, Snowman asked whether the exile was sick, which caught the troll off guard. The summoner already knew that the exile was unwell, but he needed to respond in the way that the exile wanted him to. Finally, the troll fully revealed himself and admitted that all the sores on his body came from his illness. He warned that the disease was contagious and that it would be best for the young man to stay away. After looking at the new set of choices, Snowman asked to learn more about the exile's situation while explaining that it was the reason for his visit. Despite the troll's unwillingness, he gave in and asked what the strange man wanted to know. In response, Snowman offered to listen to anything the exile was willing to share. The unusual response made the troll hesitate before finally inviting Snowman into his house for a talk. On the way there, the exile asked not to be held responsible if something happened to the man. When they arrived inside the hut, Snowman saw a strange collection of things, from herbs and spices to books piled on the floor. The young man was noticeably surprised, which made the exile ask whether he had found something strange. Afterward, the summoner experienced troll hospitality when the host served herbal tea. 
As both of them sat cross-legged on the straw mat, Snowman accepted the beverage before insisting that he first wanted to hear the exile's story. The troll then began to explain how a pandemic hit the tribe, having come from the steep Rocky Mountains. This disease killed many generations of trolls before the members of the Rock Canine tribe set one rule to prevent the disease from spreading. The infected had to be exiled. At that point, Snowman interrupted and asked whether his host was one of those sent away. The latter denied this before explaining that his mother had been exiled while she was still pregnant with him. She had begged for them to allow her to give birth within the safety of the tribe but they would not allow it. The tribe members thought the child would only continue to spread the disease. They were not entirely sure if that would happen, but they were not willing to take any chances. The troll clenched his fist tightly when he said that part of the story because of the deep resentment his late mother had once carried. She wished that everything would disappear. When Snowman asked what he meant by everything, the troll explained that his mother was referring to the rock canine tribe, the disease, and finally, himself. Eventually, the summoner asked whether the disease was incurable. In response, the troll revealed that he had used sorcery to learn the human language, after which he researched the disease while reading all kinds of books. According to his research, a cure could be made if the ingredients could be found. He needed the corpse finger mushroom, which could only be found high up the mountains. Snowman suddenly interrupted and asked if the mushroom in question was yet to be found. In response, the troll revealed that his bones had been weakened by the disease which had spread deep into his body, and because of his condition, he was unable to climb up the cliffs. As though waiting for that reply, Snowman quickly asked the exile to allow him to fetch the mushroom. The troll was surprised by the sudden request, but Snowman smiled at him while recalling the setting of the quest. The trolls, leaders, and the problems were all intertwined. Because of this, he was confident that he could save the exile. Right then, he proposed a deal.